about that. Thank you. Uh, again, and welcome to the development permit panel meeting of uh, Wednesday, October 28th. Um, uh, I'm John Irving, General Manager of Engineering Public Works. I'll be chairing the uh, panel today. To my left, we have Peter Russell, who's the Director of Sustainability and District Energy. And to my right, Milton Chan, who's the Director of Engineering, constituting the full panel today. Um, we deal with issues on the panel here of form and character. Uh, other issues of density and land use are, are not for consideration or discussion. Uh, we have an order of business. We'll start with a presentation by the proponents, uh, followed by staff comments, questions from the panel, and then public comments from anyone in the audience uh, who wishes to comment on, on, the, uh, on the agenda item. Um, letters will be read into the record, and then there'll be a panel deliberation. So we have a couple of items on uh, the agenda today. First up is development permit 19872960 for the property at 2251 Westminster Highway. And I assume you are representing the proponent. Please come forward, introduce yourself, and uh, tell us what you'd like us to hear. Oh, okay. Thank you. The clerk has advised me we need to approve the minutes first. So moved. Second. Any questions? Errors, omissions? All those in favor? Excellent. Thanks. All right, you're good to go. Okay, uh, my name is Eric uh, from Eric Law Architect. I'm the uh, architect, project architect for this uh, townhouse project at 22551 Westminster Highway. And um, so, how do I pull up the file? Yeah, let me start with the, uh, the context of the, the site first. Um, so as you can see from the slide that uh, our site is along uh, Westminster Highway and is a, a trapezium size of a lot and there's an uh, existing townhouse project next to us. Behind is a big park uh, with uh, trees and children amenity at the back. And outside, as you can see from the above here, that you can see the townhouse next to us. This is our uh, lot right now, which is empty. And uh, we've got some photos next to it is this uh, townhouse uh, next door and opposite side of us. Okay, um, what we're trying to do is that we, our project is basically to match the height and size and the shape of the townhouse project uh, as next door, which is basically a, uh, is a stepping uh, along each side. And we got a entrance, uh, we got a shared entrance from the next door neighbor to coming in from the shared driveway from uh, Westminster Highway into our property. And we respect the, the way that is configured uh, right now along the neighbor, which we, do a, uh, we have a common shared driveway coming with us, and we have the two row of townhouse project on each side of the uh, driveway. And uh, we got amenity at the front, uh, which is uh, further away from the next door neighbor. We push this this building back a little bit further so that we got more space away from the neighbor, respecting their privacy and also uh, for uh, geotechnical reason too, that we uh, we can get um, should be away from the uh, next door neighbor because of the soil is not that good on this side. And in fact, that for this side we cannot have any. Uh, uh, living uh, dwelling unit or living space at the ground level because of flat plane level. That's why on, on this property, all the parking is basically on the ground level and the living space and the bedroom is on the second and the third level, which is a typical arrangement in this area. 
um, the size, uh, the uh, the building mass of the uh, of the public of the building is basically we uh, we got um, um, three story high, and which is similar height to the next door neighbor. But actually, in fact, we are a little bit narrower than the next door neighbor building. But in terms of the finishes, materials, we use hardy panel, which, uh, uh, in, uh, which is a high, uh, good uh, maintenance fee material uh, uh, for long future use uh, with rain screen system, which is uh, durable in, uh, in the future. And um, one other thing is that we, we uh, for this configuration, you can see that we, we got on the second level of, of each unit, we got a really big deck at the, at the front, uh, uh, along the living space, which provide a lot of amenity space to the living space, uh, to the drain users uh, within this, uh, this uh, townhouse. And we got the third level, which are the bedrooms above, uh, uh, which give you, um, which are, uh, give us a privacy and also away from the from the um, from the driveway, and and for the landscape, one of the things that is that you can see that uh, on our land uh, on our side plan is that we got a park next to us. That's why uh, na uh, later the uh, the landscape architect we talks about that we introduce a walkway which goes. At the back of the uh, of the site, directly to the to the back, so that people from this uh, townhouse unit can easily access to the uh, park amenity at the back. And I think at this time I will uh, hand this time to uh, our landscape to talk about the landscape. Good afternoon. My name is Denitsa Dimitrova, PMG landscape architect. Uh, the landscape plan for this uh, project has been designed to provide each unit with uh, private, private yards, with uh, shade trees, uh, landscape area, uh, open lawn area, and for units at west property line, we're providing small patio area. Uh, streetscape has been improved with low aluminum uh, transparent fence, which set back with two feet from property line to accommodate uh, interesting uh, species. In front of that, uh, privacy from uh, neighboring property have been created with uh, six feet uh, wood fence. Uh, and uh, you, uh, yards for uh, private yards have been separated with uh, uh, six feet uh, wood fence dropping with 42 inch uh, fence and landscape for privacy. Uh, we are providing um, a many area for this project uh, where it included small play area, uh, bench for caregivers and bike racks which are located next to mail kiosk. Also, we are proposing free garden plots at south uh, east corner with a plotting table, with composter, uh, so people can use that for planting uh, vegetation, um, herbs. Uh, we are providing as well um, permeable, permeable pavers uh, for internal driveway and for uh, visitor parking spots. Uh, there is um, nearby, um, I think the architect, they talk about that, um, open uh, area with the play area included, so kids can use, kids of this uh, site can use it as well, not just uh, propose small uh, play area. So um, this is an overview for a landscape for this project. Thank you, that's the conclusion of the presentation. Great. Mr. Craig, do we have any staff comments? Uh, a couple comments if I can, Mr. Chair. Uh, there is a variance associated with this project to allow tandem parking in all of the units. That variance was identified at the rezoning stage. 
Uh, it is a consistent variance with uh, the Hamilton area. It is used as a way of achieving the minimum flood construction level uh, and the 100% tandem parking arrangement is consistent with the adjacent townhouse development. Uh, the project will achieve uh, step code three and there is one convertible uh, unit included in the proposal. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions from the panel? Um, just one, one question about the walkway to the park. Um, looks like that kind of goes through uh, one of the front entrances or walkways to one of the units because there's a shrub in the way. Is that how it's configured? Sorry, if you could just come up yeah. to the microphone. Just What's the question? The walkway to the public park, it looks, it's right along the north property line and then it runs right into a shrub. There is no space for any landscape between the fence and the walkway. This is what you call No, there is no uh, space for a landscape between the walkway building face and uh, wood fence. So it goes, they kind of go through yeah. the, the walkway to that one unit yes. and then cut to the walkway. Yes. Okay. questions nope. yeah I had a, a question uh, mr. chair uh, on the landscape as well um, so in this image we're looking at here the the uh, entrance to the from the adjacent site for cars vehicles colored is that a different type of treatment on the the pavement on the pa it's a pavers it's permeable pavers for for the driveway I mean yeah or yes this is a permeable pavers which is different from uh, the it those two uh, strips on Can you use the mouse so that I'm clear where you're pointing? I'm sorry? Can you use the mouse on the... Yes. Uh, this is a permeable pavers, and this strip on at the south, this is as well permeable pavers, and that part in the middle will be asphalt. So, yeah, it's kind of divide and, yeah, emphasize to ends and then on the visitor parking is that tandem as well it does look like it could hold it's the same the same pavers the entire strip but in terms of the amount of cars that can park there yeah it looks like it's deep enough for two cars to park in the visitor parking am i reading uh, it incorrectly or that that came from site plan so i assume the layout it's concerning that I would get the architect to answer that. I'm assuming your requirement is to have basic parking, but it, it appears to be quite deep and allow for up to at least four vehicles. I just wanted you to confirm what can be stored there in terms of cars. Uh, I think you're you are talking about the, the, the depth here? Yeah. Is that, is that what you're trying to do? Uh, at least on the east side. Yeah, on the, on the east side, because you got the, uh, if you look at this one, you got the uh, uh, garbage uh, recycling room in front of it. And then, and because we cannot put any parking in front of, we are not allowed to put any parking in front of the garbage room because of loading and unloading reason. That's why we have to push the parking at the back. And in fact, the, the other reason why we have to put it back is that if you look at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the drive aisle uh, access uh, turning radius thing, that we do need some kind of uh, deeper pocket so that the car can easily turn out and turn in. And that's why we got a length. Uh, it looks like that you, you have a, a double car length, but in fact, we can only park one because of the loading and unloading at the front. You cannot put any parking in front. And it's not supposed to park any, any park in front of it. So maybe just a follow up to that then, how is the garbage truck supposed to access that garbage enclosure? Uh, the garbage truck is coming in here and then coming at the end, then they will load and unload it and then they will have to back out and then going in and this way coming out. That's why, that's why we're using uh, the neighbor turn around uh, thing uh, as a turn around for the garbage truck to turn around and then go out. So they're going to have to back up through both developments with yes, their backup yes. siren going. Yes, yes. 
and how frequent is that garbage pickup going to be? Yeah, that's, that's where we got the three-point uh, uh, parking, uh, three-point uh, garbage truck turnaround for that, that purpose. From right, and so how frequent is the garbage pickup? Well, typically it's only once, once a month, well, once a week in terms of the uh, loading and unloading. And in fact, because of the uh, of the site, uh, the size of the site is pretty limited in terms of providing a uh, free point uh, turn within our site, and and that's why we have to uh, use the next door neighbor. And in fact, we got a covenant uh, from the next door neighbor to use the whole driveway as part of the uh, covenant for this to develop this site for the services, and also um, that's why. Uh, the owner has been talking to the uh, neighbor also to, to make sure that, that they are, uh, all the maintenance things, all the uh, 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 management thing can be worked out, will be worked out with them. Were there any other solutions for that Gerber enclosure then? Because that's, I mean, to back up that distance seems fairly, doesn't seem like an optimum solution. Um, This is basically the, um, if you look at the at large one, our site was within this, this area. And uh, at one point we put the, at one point we put the uh, garbage in the front, but the, uh, I think there was a, uh, con a concern about um, the, the garbage is too close to the uh, abandoned space. And that's why we have to put it, the garbage at the back and with the uh, more uh, widened uh, drive aisle th turnaround thing, that um, um, I believe that that has been circulated to the engine department too for their comment and then um, get this uh, agreed with, with the, in terms of the layout. Maybe a comment from staff. Is this a typical solution in this situation or? Uh, through the chair, uh, it, I wouldn't go as far as to say it is typical, um, but it is common for uh, the garbage truck or large loading vehicles to have to back down the driveway in order to make a three-point turn at the T intersection of the driveway. So uh, this was reviewed by our environmental management staff. Uh, they do support the proposed location and the access arrangement. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Just one other question or comment uh, around the play area. I, I know that there's uh, the one bench um, in the context of COVID. <laughs> Maybe there's an opportunity to work with staff to have a second bench so that uh, we can minimize, uh, at least allow uh, people to have some distancing. So yeah, that second bench would, yeah. We could, we can propose a second bench. It just uh, in this COVID situation, play area shouldn't I, I, be. I, I think, I think <laughs> it's you so can hard to. Yeah, I, I think you can work with staff. It's a suggestion for consideration. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, through the chair, we're happy to uh, work with the applicant to add that extra bench before this proceeds to council, should the panel so desire. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just had an additional question for the architect. Sorry to keep you guys switching off there. Um, if you could just bring up your south elevation again. Sure. Uh, you want the south elevation or the yeah. color one? Um, so certainly above, for the unit above the, gar the garbage enclosure there in your mechanical room, I mean, there's very, well, there's no glazing at all. Um, is there not an opportunity there? To, I mean, I, you know, if I was interested in that unit, you've got an exposure to the park side uh, and you're on the south wall. So I would assume that would be a key opportunity for passive solar heating. So is there a reason why there's no glazing there or and very minimal glazing on um, the building to the west? We are talking about this this wall here. Yeah. Why, why, um... I mean, that is facing onto the right of way or the park property. Is that yeah, right? it is. is facing onto the. Um, let me see. 
is facing onto the row here. We'll talk about the wall here, which is facing onto a, a, a turnaround uh, row along the Westminster Highway. Um, the reason why we don't have the um, the reason why we don't uh, uh, don't have the um, windows is that on the architectural layout, as you can see on the ground level, is basically uh, the stairs on this side with because of the uh, arrangement, so that we can arrange a elevator or, or, or storage. Right now, it's storage, but in the future, it will be an elevator. Um, for the uh, convertible unit on this side, and then it goes up to the second level with the stair also along this, so, this side. That's why um, from the architectural point of view, uh, there's no need to have any windows. All the, all the functional rooms and windows will be able to face directly onto the Westminster Highway as well as the courtyard. And that's why um, from the uh, architectural functional point of view, we don't necessarily need any windows along this side. Okay, I get that you don't have rooms there. You put a staircase there. Yeah. You could still put windows in the stairwell and provide uh, improved passive solar heating. In You've got a bedroom, it looks like, too, on the east side. So there's no window. Well, if you, well, if we want to add windows on this side, well, if you want to add window, yes, on this side, you got more opportunity rather than on this side, but because we got walls which is uh, which are um, uh, bedrooms on this side with with the opportunity to add some more windows on this side if we, if we need to. It just seems like a missed opportunity to me. Um, maybe again uh, with a positive panel recommendation, we could look at that with staff to see if there's any opportunity there. I'm assuming that would be beneficial from a passive solar heating point of view as opposed to a net negative, um, introducing glazing as opposed to an insulated wall. But uh, um, yeah, it just seems odd to me that you're not taking advantage of a southern exposure that's uh, completely open. You know, it's not like you're gonna have another building on that side or anything like that. Absolutely, we can, we can look into whether we can provide more windows and then we can go back to the uh, CEA to do beneficial to get windows or we got the thicker insulation on that side with which one is more beneficial in terms of energy saving on this project. Okay, thank you. So do we have anybody from the public here uh, who wishes to comment on this project? Not seeing anyone, right? Uh, are there any letters, Mr. Clerk? None, Mr. No letters, okay. Panel deliberation. Anybody have any comments or? No, I think other than uh, what I've stated about the opportunity for another bench, um, provide some more physical distancing would, I think, be positive addition. Yeah, that and uh, if uh, it can be taken under advisement that the uh, the glazing on the south side be reviewed, um, that would be great. Um, uh, other than that, I think uh, we've uh, covered it off, so I'd be happy to support the project. Do I have a motion on the positive staff recommendation? I'll move it. Seconded. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. So we'll just let you... Uh, Clear out there. Okay, so item number two on the agenda, development permit 19875398, uh, Spires Road Development Holdings for the property at 8671 et al, Spires Road.
Thank you. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. And uh, I will. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Kai Hodson uh, from Hodson Architecture, and I also want to introduce Ben Boziak from Hodson Architecture and Alyssa from Prospect Refuge, our landscape architecture uh, firm on the team. So our project is um, on Spires Road, and it's a um, 22-unit townhouse project. Um, We've got a, just a you know brief presentation for you today, and uh, I'll start and throw it to the landscape architect to to come to, to finish it up, and then you know look forward to to commentary. Um, so just you know very briefly, the site is located in uh, the city center plan. So it's sort of a higher density townhouse development. So the parking is on the ground floor, but it's enclosed uh, parking structure, and the units. Uh, wrap around uh, so the units face all sides of the of this of the project um, so just to orient yourselves uh, it's Aspires Road and Cook Crescent so it's a, a, a sort of corner lot uh, arrangement um, currently the driveway uh, access for the parking is from the east um, and the sort of public um, facing entry is from the south, uh, aligned with Cook Gate. There's a number of trees that we're retaining through this project, so two of which are located in the northeast corner, where we have an outdoor amenity space, and a, a number of neighboring trees are also being retained um, uh, around the perimeter of the site, where we've also um, organized uh, two public walkways. So there's a public walkway that runs along the western property line, and a public walkway along the northern property line. Um, so these are just some sort of illustrations of the site. Um, so as I mentioned, there's two walkways here are shown in green. Uh, the idea is that these are gonna connect in the future through the development of this neighborhood. Uh, there's a park proposed in the OCP towards the north um, and towards the south is a school. So um, the idea is to kind of create some porosity and connectivity through the site as well. Um, as I mentioned, the parking structure, which is in the bottom corner, sort of illustrated in red diagrammatically, uh, is sort of the, the center of the donut, and the, the housing rings around it. Um, this is just sort of a massing evolution uh, to the project, um, just to familiarize yourself with it. So we sort of have three buildings, or three blocks, um, one along the south, one along the west, and one along the north property lines. Each unit has a front door. Um, to kind of create a nice public realm and to, to engage with the street. Um, we looked at a number of different iterations um, through the rezoning process from a design point of view, and uh, we've arrived at this strategy where um, the massing is sort of broken down to really illustrate the sort of residential typology of this sort of higher density um, townhouse development. So every every module is is organized by the, by the, the sort of proportions of the units. Um, peaked roofs uh, sort of break down the massing of the building, and we've introduced uh, small gaps between the units um, to again just kind of create a hierarchy at this uh, at this scale. Um, on top of the parkade area is a landscape courtyard at level two, uh, and all the units um, have a, sort of a private outdoor space that opens onto the, the that that uh, courtyard. And then, as I mentioned before, there's at grade front patios. Uh, we have a range of housing types in this project. The majority of the units are three-bedroom, sort of your typical townhouse three-bedroom um, unit. But we also have two basic universal housing units that are located at grade, as well as two units that have lock-off suites. Um, and there's an elevator. Uh, you can't see it here, but there's an elevator that serves the project as well to get uh, public or uh, you know, residents or visitors up to the second floor level. We included some model photos. We had this for our ADP, and we weren't able to present it in person um, back in uh, April or May. I forget when it was. We had a virtual ADP, um, and we've been able to um, make a few changes that aren't reflected in the model, um, specifically about the materiality. So we're looking at um, we've, we've proposed to sort of alternate the materiality of some of the units to sort of help break down the scale uh, and repetition of the project. Um, the facades that face the streets and, and sort of the perimeter of the, 
project are clad in brick. Um, and uh, there's sort of a kind of horizontal datum for the ground floor to kind of break down the scale vertically. And we've employed sort of a roof overhang or roof projection um, uh, appurtenance or a frame around each, um, each unit to sort of further emphasize the, the facade depth uh, to create additional kind of rhythm to the, to the buildings. And, um, and also to kind of harken back to that sort of residential neighborhood uh, that w this project finds itself in. Um, it's, a, it's an emerging and evolving neighborhood. Uh, I think this is the second development in the, in the Cook neighborhood. Um, so we're you know, mindful of scale and, and, and trying to kind of have a more modern take on a, on a residential typology. Um, this is an illustration from the southwest corner. So I mentioned the brick. We have a light and a dark color palette, and that sort of alternates around uh, in, a, in, a, in a sort of a, uh, it's not, not alternates, but sort of a, a loose pattern around the project to, uh, to break up the repetitiveness of the, of the facades. That was one, one comment that came out of the recommendation of the ADP panel. Um, and the, the sort of flanking sides of the facades of the buildings are clad in a horizontal siding, um, which also wraps itself around uh, to really kind of em emphasize that sort of uh, frame uh, approach for the roof overhangs. So some more material examples here. The soffits, uh, we're proposing a wood or a wood effect material for the soffits just to kind of bring some warmth. The entrances are all recessed on the ground level so to create a bit of extra privacy space for the front doors and, and, and those are clad in wood just to kind of bring a sort of, uh, just some warmth and a kind of more residential type of uh, uh, materiality to the entryways. This is, a, again, a photo from the west. So um, here's a good example where you can see the walkway which uh, penetrates the site along the west. So these units also have front doors that open onto the walkway and they're, and they're sort of semi-private patios. Um, there's, there's opportunities. We have benches um, located at some of these nodes uh, where these uh, spaces meet each other. Um, I don't know if there's much I need to dwell on in the site plan other than uh, I'll just sort of orient a few things. So the uh, northeast corner, there's an outdoor amenity space on the ground floor. Um, we've um, augmented that to include some additional children's play space. Um, we also have a, another children's play space on the second floor. Um, Sorry, I'm jumping here. It's located in this area where we have our sort of main entrance stair and our elevator. That's the, uh, the other sort of communal space, which is private and uh, secure for the residents. Um, let's, sorry, let's jump back up. So here you can see the, the parking, which is contained within the sort of building envelope. So it's um, enclosed. Um, the elevator is located here, just for your reference. And here's our mail room and sort of a entry and exit way from the arcade. And all the bikes are stored inside as well, in a bike room. Moving up to the second floor, Before here you can see. To interrupt, just while you're on that sure. last one, where's the parking for the units to the west? So each unit has an ass one assigned space, and then there's visitor spaces. So I believe, so for example, the two universal units, which are in, in red here, have a assigned accessible parking space to them. And um, I mean, I could zoom in here. I think it's I think it's annotated on the drawings we've assigned. So, for example, here, like this is assigned to this unit, this particular parking space. Um, so, um, sorry, that thing came up. This particular space is assigned to unit number one. Unit no number one being here in the southwest corner. So we've indicated um, the parking spaces which are assigned to each unit. Okay. Yeah. So there's one space per unit, and how many visitor spaces? Great question. I'm going to ask Ben for my hint, I, little hint on this. 27 parking, 27 resident parking stalls. So there's five visitor stalls, just to answer into the mic. <laughs> uh, on the second floor, I mentioned um, this is a um, raised courtyard. And you can see here, you know, all the units have their own private outdoor space as well, which would be really nice for the residents. 
this is just an example of the two elevation, two, two of our elevations. So um, the south elevation along the top and the west elevation along the side or the bottom. Um, this is the sort of entry stair uh, sort of lobby area, just to orient yourself. Um, the children's play area above. These are some section elevations, just again to show you the sort of sense of scale. When you're in the courtyard, it's more of a two-story scale um, uh, when you're on the second floor. Uh, so quite a nice sort of uh, domestic residential scale up there. Excuse me, um, while we're on this image, it, it relates to a question I wanted to ask. Yeah, sure. Is that okay, Mr. Chair? Uh, maybe, well, is it? it it's, Go for it. It's, it's, it's particular. I just wanted to understand the living space that's at that le at street level. Let's just get through the presentation first. And then okay. We'll, yeah, sure. sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so Alyssa, do you want to come speak to the landscape? Okay. Hi there, Alyssa Sanchezin with Prospects and Refuge. So for the, for the landscape, we've tried to balance the, you know, creating enjoyable private spaces for individual residences and also creating, um, you know, an engaging streetscape for, to help improve walkability of the neighborhood, encourage people to walk through the neighborhood. We have these, um, you know, future pathway connections. So by the time this, um, you know, the next developments happen in this neighborhood, like, we envision it being quite a nice walkable, um, walkable neighborhood. We also have um, created, you know, characters so that each uh, each face of the um, the building has its own character, and that relates both to the the sort of microclimate of the site, um, the sunshade, you know, as solar aspect, that sort of thing. Um, we will have. Uh, I have a blow up I'll show you of the amenity space. We've also, we've worked very closely with the, the arborist um, to develop a, a landscape response that respects the trees that we're able to keep on site. Uh, and we've come up with some unique detailing that allows that to happen. Am I just clicking this to change? Okay, oh I can scroll. Okay, um, and then here on the upper level, we have the same thing. We have sort of a combination of, um, you know, fences and um, planted raised planters with uh, with hedge material to to create privacy, but also to allow for some openness between units, so that it creates more of a sense of a community than, you know, if it if there's too much screening, um, you know, it looks like a bit like a corral or something like that. So we're trying to make it feel more friendly and, uh, you know, to create a sense of community within the courtyard. The, um, and you can see in this slide where the amenity space is. We have a blow up, so I'll show you that in a minute. But um, you know, there were concerns, obviously, with the sort of adjacency with the private patios. And so we've created some larger, um, larger planters there with sort of more robust screening to help provide some separation. OK. So back down to the lower level here, we have, a, we have a connection from the building here on the sort of south side and then two exits out uh, onto two separate walkways. So there's a natural flow of traffic that, um, that's happening here that we're accommodating, but also providing some opportunities for um, you know, some breakaway pause, like you run into your neighbor on your way in or out and you can stop and have a five minute conversation. So, you know, really trying to encourage that sort of, um, those opportunities for informal connections, especially in the um, sort of current climate where, you know, we're all like more isolated and spending less time sort of engaged in those casual social conversations. You know, having a little bit of opportunity to do that uh, is really important. The, one of the things that came up in the, um, the urban design panel was this, on this north walkway, creating more of a sense of openness and um, you know, creating a bit of a, an opportunity for some public amenity. So we, we pulled back and put this little bench here on the corner and we've also uh, worked on the materiality of this 
screen here to make the screen um, translucent so that um, you know, it, it's more permeable so it doesn't feel like you're hiding behind a six foot solid board fence or something like that and you can't see what's going on. It's more open. The amenity, this is a large existing um, conifer tree and the one to the north is a smaller existing tree. Um, and you know, we're trying to figure out how to, how to protect this tree but also provide some amenity space. Um, and so we, you know, we experimented with a few different things. In the end, what we landed in is that we can kind of you know, build up the, 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 the grade is higher out here to go into the building. And then um, you know, we're actually looking at putting a small ramp here to ramp down to the level of the planter. And again, we've worked really closely with the arborist to make sure that we can do this in a way that respects the tree root zone um, and create a bit of a play, like a natural play amenity space there uh, in a way that is not disruptive to the tree roots. Then there's robust screening here from the PMT and uh, you know, just a, a nice mix of planting to, for seasonal interest. The upper amenity, this is again, it sort of ties in with the natural flow of traffic as people are walking, um, coming up from both the elevator here or the stairs here. Um, so we've created, you know, the flow to these individual units, but then also this flow that goes through. So again, there's places to kind of break away, have a short conversation, um, you know, with a neighbor, and then also for some overlook for um, kids' play spaces. We're looking at using like a port-in-place rubber and creating sort of an, an extra layer of, um, of play by putting in different colors to create sort of patterns in the, in the rubber. And we've done that on other projects quite successfully and it looks really nice and you know, kids play with it in all sorts of ways that we can't anticipate. Um, these are just some examples of sort of the, you know, the look of the planters and then we're looking at doing some chalk walls um, on the face of the planters to just animate the space a little bit further, create some layers of uh, play opportunity. On the back to the ground floor, this is just the typical ground floor unit. So you can see there's a couple steps up. There's space for a small table, a little patch of grass, um, and then some some privacy planting and some orna more ornamental planting. So you know, just like it looks, it's a nice. It has a nice street front. Um, you know, it's a nice experience from walking as well as um, you know, very usable for the individual units. And then back up to the second floor, this is just a section showing the height of the planters um, and then the trees in the planters. This is, uh, <coughs> sorry, this is on the, on the north side and this is so showing the detailing around those existing neighbors' trees on the, on the north property line. Um, and so we reviewed this in detail with our, our arborist to come up with sort of a, a design solution that would protect the tree and create like a raised uh, walkway so that we could make the grade work and have it be an accessible walkway. This is again uh, the, the lower amenity area and the blue lines that you can see there show kind of the extent of the tree protection zone. The red line is the property line. And then uh, what we're doing is, is basically using the same the same technology that we, we would use where we have to pave over a raised um, uh, structural slab, like a concrete structural slab. So we're using pedestals and pavers and floating them over the root zone. And that allows permeability and it allows minimal um, impact to the roots of the trees. So it's a nice way to kind of protect the tree root zone and still meet our grades that we need to meet. And that is the end of uh, the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have comments, Mr. Craig? Uh, just a couple comments, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, there are two basic universal housing units associated with the project as discussed in the applicant's presentation. There are also two secondary suites uh, provided in the development. The development will achieve step code, energy step code level three. Uh, there is a significant uh, servicing agreement associated with the proposal for frontage works on Spires Road and Cook Crescent, as well as site servicing. 
And I'd just like to uh, take the opportunity to commend the applicant's design team as it relates to the retention of the two trees along the Cook Crescent frontage and the efforts made to ensure that those trees will be retained. Thank you. Okay, questions from the panel. Mr. Russell, I believe you had. I did have a question, yeah, and I think yeah. it actually was in the last image. Um, if you go back a slide, I just wanted to understand maybe another back. To, uh, Front patio? Is that what you're yeah, no, isn't the, okay. yeah, that's the image. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I just wanted to understand the living space that's at the front door, because, okay. uh, like, soon after, there's a parked vehicle, and you'll have access from the parkade, I, I noticed, for most units. Correct, yeah. Directly into their own stall, if you will. That's right, um, yeah. But I just wanted to understand the living space that's on this main floor. So, for the, for the majority of the units, um, I guess if you're entering the suite from the street, there's a... You, you enter into the suite, the staircase, which leads you up to the main living spaces, which are on the second floor. There's a closet, uh, there's a small room, small modest room to, to your left, which you can see, you know, use the mouse right here, uh, which could be used as a den or it has a small closet in there. So I mean, it could, it could function as a bedroom. And as you move further to the back, there's a washroom and a mechanical space underneath the stairwell. And then that's where you have that door, which then leads you to the, to the, to the parking area. So. Um, there's no shared, you know, party walls with the parkade from a, from a living or bedroom space. Yeah. Um, I could jump to the floor plan if you wanted to see no, the, I, the entirety. That, that satisfies my question. I, I just, you know, part of activating the street is actually having living space down yes. there. So yeah. uh, I think there will be a tendency to use that back door more than the front door, but uh, I think there's enough living space there to animate the street, encourage, you know, using the front door as well. Yeah, and um, for example, you know, we have some units which are like the, these these uh, red colored units are the accessible units. Uh, it's a one story unit. And so that very much animates this, this, this particular corner of the project. So it's, you know, it's a three bedroom suite with living spaces, uh, you know, it has two frontages. So I think that really helps. Um, like, you know, especially the corners of the project. We've really thought about that with additional glazing and you know, trying to animate the architectural design as well as, of course, sort of the public realm. Yeah. Uh, another question, it, it might be for staff, but it's just around the public perimeter walkway and just want to understand what the expectations would be for the redevelopment of the sites uh, north of it, for instance. Then are there... Um, reciprocal uh, easements for having, like, is it possible that there'll be in the future two public walkways on each parcel? Uh, through the chair, uh, yes. Uh, the intent would be that as adjacent parcels come in, those walkways would be expanded. Uh, there is a statutory right of way to provide for public access. We would be securing statutory right way, rights of way on adjacent sites as well. Similar, so would there be a fence down the middle in the future? Uh, no, the fence would be removed. Uh, there will be a fence in the interim. Uh, long term, that fence would be removed. So it'll read more like a, a public thoroughfare. For like sure. a muse. Yeah. Yeah, just to clarify on that, then the, the statutory rights of way are in favor of general public access? Okay. Yes. Any other questions, Mr. No, I'm, I'm good, thanks. Okay, anything? Um, just one question, like just with the existing single family housing, um, what have you done to take a look at the, the overlook issues just in the interim until they redevelop? Yeah, thank you. I think part of the, uh, I guess, retention of the existing trees around the west and north side will, will help with that um, in that there's uh, some sort of, you know, passive protection or shielding. There's also significant setbacks by way of these walkways. So the building is, is was uh, moved further away from the property lines, um, quite a bit more than one might find in even a single family neighborhood. So um, I think just having that extra space and you know, depending on how these develop in the future, um, presumably those same setbacks would apply to you know, neighboring lots as they develop. Um, to the north, the existing houses are, are because they have rear yards, they're, they're quite a distance away from the property line presently. So I think overlook wouldn't be much different than you would might find in a, in a, in a regular neighborhood, um, you know, in other parts of the lower mainland, so. I did have another question, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, 
In terms of your step code strategy, is there any form and character implications here? I'm, I'm specifically yeah. wondering about if you're intending to use heat pumps, and uh, if so, how are those going to be located to minimize noise if that's sure. the case? Sure, yeah. We have, um, from a mechanical system point of view, uh, there's HRVs for each unit, and those are located inside the unit under the stair. There's a heat pump which is located in the garage. It's mounted on the wall above the parking space area. We have, it's, it's in the package. If you want me to jump to that, I could show you. That's okay. Um, so that um, the, our mechanical engineers have designed the airflow to accommodate if you know they were all running at the same time, you know, sort of thing. Um, and in terms of passive design, I mean, we have roof overhangs. We're using triple glazing for the windows. Um, you know, uh, exterior insulation in our wall assemblies. So quite a robust. Um, Design for the for the building envelope. Great, thank you. I had just a couple of questions. Just going back to the parking. So it's so it's one parking stall per unit. Is that? Uh, we have slightly more than one stall per unit. Um, I don't know the exact. One percentage. assigned stall and then guest parking. That's right. Yeah. Parking. There's five visitor stalls. Okay. I mean, typically we're seeing two stalls per unit. Is this meeting the bylaw requirements, Mr. Craig? Or? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. The requirement in this area of city center is 1.2 stalls per unit. Uh, 1.2 stalls is provided per unit. I believe what the applicant is indicating that they have assigned a minimum of one stall to each unit. There would be uh, some additional parking stalls uh, that are unassigned that will be assigned as part of the sales contracts, I'm assuming. Um, then going to the landscaping too, what's, so the trees that you're doing on the, uh, the elevated, uh, courtyard, I guess, um, so they're in planters and what species of those you, you, I believe there were some comments on them, um, potentially having limited size to maintain the form and character of, of that, uh, that courtyard. Could you just speak to that a little bit more, um, in terms of the species and, uh, what size they're going to grow to and how long they're going to live and be maintained? Do they have uh, built-in irrigation? Uh, yeah, so th everything will have built-in irrigation. Um, I can't remember offhand exactly what the, uh, the species is. I might have to sort of get back to you on that. But um, typically what we find is that for sort of a small, the small scale tree that would be appropriate for a planter like that. Um, as long as they're irrigated, they do quite well in, in um, the planter size that we're showing. So you could expect that a tree like that would live in excess of 20 or 25 years. I mean, they could be a bonsai tree and, you know, live for a really long time, but, um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's, uh, Okay, well maybe um, that could be taken under advisement to confirm the species and the suitability for that application. Yeah. Here, I could take a look and see if I've got it on the upper, we have the plant list on here, but I'm not sure that we have the upper level plant list. Is this for the upstairs or the upper level trees as well? Okay, that would be great. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's see what do. Sorry about this. Just give me one second to see if the tree species are on here. Surfaces. I'm going to just zoom it. No, I, I think they're probably a Japanese maple, which does really well in a planter that size. But uh, I, I can't I can't confirm that without uh, referring back to my full set of drawings. It has a full set. Can is it? That's page? okay. If you could just confirm later. I, with staff. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah. But the um, I guess the the long and the short of it is that you know we're selecting plants that we know are experienced, like we're, you know, experienced with them being plants that are suitable for a pot size and that sort of application. Because you want that sort of combination of it gets big enough that it feels like a real tree, but it's 
um, you know, it survives well in the soil volume and, um, you know, doesn't overtake the space. So it's kind of a balance to, to get the right species for that. Right. Mr. Chair, I do have the species available if you'd like. Uh, there's a combination of three different species on the second level, uh, hybrid magnolia, uh, Manchurian snake bark maple, and a full moon maple. maple. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. those are the suitable species as you've described. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, were there any further questions? Uh, just one more. On, on the view of the courtyard looking east, uh, I don't know if you can just bring that one up. This view or a, no, or was, a photograph? Uh, the colored one. This one? Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's indicative. It seems quite monolithic in that view. So is the materials gonna be different or is it basically gonna be like a, all one color like it's shown? No, so the unit color will um, alternate similarly to the uh, exterior sort of perimeter facades of the building. So there will be some alternating um, cladding colors on the, you know, from one unit to the next. How about the ground treatment? Right now, everything the pavers? seems the same. Yeah, the pavers. Yeah, the pavers. Um, Alyssa, you'd have to help me out on the paver um, if it was going to alternate from one unit to the next. I think that's how it's illustrated. I'm just going to jump ahead to the yeah, landscape we, plan. I think we landed on the different colors for the public. Um, I have to go back to uh, yeah, different colors for the public and private, and the north and south. Yeah, in different patterns. Okay. Yeah. So. Great. Um, if there's no further questions, then um, do we have anybody from the public here that wishes to speak on the project? Seeing no one, uh, Mr. Clerk, any letters? Yeah. Can you give us a brief summary on that? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I'm happy to do so. Uh, we did receive one piece of correspondence from uh, Mr. Uh, Jose Gonzalez, a uh, resident in the area. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez uh, has cited a number of uh, concerns. I'll go through those concerns on a uh, issue specific basis. Uh, so some concerns are noted with respect to traffic circulation and traffic during construction. Uh, much of the uh, concern raised is in relationship to some ongoing city utility works along the Cook Gate uh, frontage uh, and a traffic incident that happened uh, recently with a uh, traffic uh, incident that caused the Cook Gate uh, intersection to be or access into the neighborhood to be closed uh, while that incident was being dealt with. Uh, the city's uh, Ongoing infrastructure work in the area is intended to be completed in January of 2021. Uh, in terms of access into the neighborhood, uh, while there are intermittent closures, closures of Cook Gate, uh, the Spires Gate entry into the neighborhood uh, remains active throughout. Um, the city, uh, in terms of construction traffic related to the proposed development, prior to building permit issuance, they will be required to provide a construction parking and management plan to deal with all trade parking deliveries to the site. Uh, the applicant will also be required to have traffic uh, personnel on site anytime there are deliveries that will obstruct uh, the road and any deliveries obstructing the road will need to be approved by the city. Uh, the second concern uh, noted uh, is in relationship to potential damage to city roads as a result of construction. Uh, the developer will be required to enter into a servicing agreement for, with the city as a condition of this development for new road works. They will also be required to place damage deposits as a condition of the building permit. Any damage as a result of their construction activity will need to be rectified. Uh, the next uh, issue raised is in relationship to traffic uh, generated and parking in the neighborhood. Uh, the development 
was reviewed by our transportation division. A traffic impact study was reviewed uh, based on the traffic impact assessment, the proposed development. Uh, our transportation division is confident that the existing road network is sufficient to handle the uh, traffic generated. Uh, question related to uh, parking of uh, non-residents on uh, the roads in the near area. Um, the, again, this development will be improving the roads along on its frontage with new curb gutter sidewalk. Uh, the developer will be required to provide a traffic parking management plan. Uh, we have also uh, asked our community bylaws department to step up parking enforcement uh, patrols in the area in response to the concern noted. Um, uh, next concern relates to the proposed private outdoor amenity space in the area where the two trees along Cook Crescent are uh, to being retained. Uh, question or comment is that that area should be retained for public use. Uh, this was discussed with the developer. There are significant liability issues uh, to provide public access into a outdoor amenity area that provides uh, play equipment. Uh, there will be future public park in the neighborhood. Uh, staff do believe that the public walkways and the future public park will satisfy the area's needs with respect to uh, public open space. Uh, next question relates to uh, whether there will be retaining walls associated with the proposed development. There are low retaining walls uh, proposed along uh, development edges. Uh, they relate or they vary from about one foot to 1.5 feet maximum. Uh, there will be fences on top of those uh, in an interim condition. We would expect that uh, when adjacent sites develop, their site grades will also be increased. Uh, last uh, concern noted relates to potential sight lines at the corner, uh, and I can confirm that the proposed development does meet the city's uh, traffic bylaw as it relates to sight lines at the corner. Okay, thank you. Maybe, and I uh, appreciate, yes, the certainly when we're looking at parking, traffic uh, construction impacts um, that's not necessarily an issue for the panel but um, uh, certainly uh, we'd be looking to the applicant to ensure that uh, an elevated level of uh, attention is paid to that with regards to the traffic management plan I'm seeing some nodding that's great um, uh, yeah we've had some issues I think in the Spires Gate previously with some development projects uh, you know contractor parking things like that so Hopefully that'll be fully addressed in a plan before we have any issues. Um, with regards to the outdoor amenity space, I appreciate the staff response regarding um, liability. Um, so there will be a new public park in the area. Is there a, there, is there a timing on that? Uh, through the chair, there is no current timing in relationship to the introduction of the parks in the area. Uh, Property acquisitions are required as well as uh, some road closures, so uh, they will be implemented uh, over the long term. So um, over that term, what are the options for the public in that area? Uh, there is a public school uh, directly on the south side of Cook Street, uh, elementary school that includes active play space. Uh, there is public uh, park in uh, Cross Garden City uh, in the form of the Garden City Park. Uh, and the site is also within walking distance of the Garden City lands. Okay, and, and maybe I just gapped on the response of the retaining walls. Maybe we could hear from the applicant with regards to, uh, you know, in looking at the plans, I'm not sure I saw there were significant retaining walls. Are they facing the adjacent properties? So we have um, quite modest retaining walls because the site is needs to be raised up. Um, approximately one foot, it varies a little bit, you know, because we, we're matching existing grades, of course, around the street. Um, just trying to find the, uh, so for example, here, this illustration, you can see the small retaining walls here. This is from the southwest corner. So generally, the retaining walls are being used to create the front patios for each unit. Uh, they're slightly elevated from the sidewalk to kind of create a little bit of that um, separation, which sort of reinforces the public-private relationship to the, to the patios. Uh, and then there's planting on top of them. As you move to the rear of the property, or the project, um, in fact, the retaining wall design is a little bit different where we have the existing trees that are being retained. It's quite an elaborate design, um, which was proposed by the arborist in order to retain those trees. Um, those aren't on the property line. They're 
they're actually uh, inboard, like at our patios, um, so that the tree, because the grade around the existing trees has to be re retained. You can't raise the grade uh, around an existing tree. So um, there's no retaining walls that are immediately kind of on the neighboring property lines. They're all set back. So you have that, what I'm looking at there is a one foot or so concrete retaining wall. Yeah. Do you have uh, a rendering of what's on the north side? Yes. Uh, just bear with me for a minute. It's on that landscape illustration. There's this a little slow, sorry. Okay, so the red line is the property line. Um, the there'd be a fence. Uh, for the, for the near term. The existing grade, because of the trees, we can't raise that. So there's a, a, a modest retaining wall here using lumber, um, which has quite a, a complex arrangement to allow um, air to permeate underneath the new public walkway. So the public walkway is here in gray with this gentleman standing on it. Um, so that's actually a, a, a timber retaining wall um, because we can't have any footings in the tree root zone. And then as you move further to the right uh, is where the, um, this blue line indicates the sort of edge of the public realm. And that's where the, the residence patio begins. And there is where we would have a, uh, another retaining wall to get up to our new finish grade, approximately 12 inches above the walkway. And so that upper retaining wall is concrete again? Yes. But all of that would be behind a wood fence. Yeah, it's all it's yeah three meters away from the property line in this in this northern uh, section cut here on the screen. Okay, um, and then so the retaining wall to the south and the east that's again just bare concrete. You're not there's no. We've been looking at whether we use a block system because they're quite low in height. They don't if you use a block like an Allen block or, or like a ground face block. Uh, you don't need to pour footings and everything. So that's another alternative we're looking at. It's a concrete, it's just basically a concrete unit uh, as opposed to poured in place concrete wall. So we're considering those two options right now. Okay, so maybe uh, that could be taken under advisement that there'll be some aesthetic improvement on the retaining wall treatment um, in that regard. Okay. Uh, was there any other further panel questions on those comments from? Mr. Gonzalez. One for me. Okay, I think uh, we're being addressed then. Um, there was no further correspondence? Nothing that was just the one? Okay, great. Uh, so panel deliberation. Uh, maybe I'll kick that off then. I, yeah, I think um, we've had a few comments and maybe, and given uh, uh, a full hearing to these comments uh, that were provided um, and written in. Um, and uh, as I've just mentioned, if we could take it under advisement that there's some improvement on the retaining walls. Um, apart from that, uh, it looks like uh, a great project for the neighborhood. Appreciate the architectural treatment and, and the walkway concept. Uh, look forward to seeing further development adjacent to that to really bring that neighborhood alive in that regard. So I'd be happy to support the project. I have similar comments, uh, so I won't repeat them, um, but uh, I do appreciate the uh, use of uh, low-carbon technology for the um, meeting your step code requirements, and um, yeah, I think it's a great project for the neighborhood. Yeah, the, the thing that I appreciate is just uh, uh, putting the parking in the middle, uh, so it's not really presenting a, mo uh, or a monolithic wall to any particular side of the property. Great, so we have a positive staff recommendation. Do we have a motion on that? So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, so I don't believe we have any new business. Date of the next meeting is November 12th, 2020. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, there are no items for that meeting on November 12th that would be in order for the panel to cancel that meeting with the next meeting being November 30th. Okay. Do you need a motion on that or anything? Or Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, so do I have a motion to, uh, for the next meeting to be November 30th, 2020? So moved, yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? Great. Motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs>
We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you.